All right, folks, today is the second official day of my COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm a barber by profession, and the governor of New Jersey ordered that barbershops and salons close down as of Thursday evening. Um, that was March the 19th, which is actually my wedding anniversary. Uh, so today is Saturday the 20th, and it is the second day I've been home. So I decided to clean up the office and film this brief library tour because I've been watching a few of them on YouTube and thought it was time to uh, do a little update. It's been about two and a half years since the last one, so there's been a few changes to the office. So uh, we'll lift the camera up and, you know, we'll, we'll start from the left to the right. Um, you know, one of the main differences is I've just acquired a lot more books in the last couple of years. So starting here from the left, you know, you see reference stuff, the IVP Black Dictionaries. I just picked up the full set in accordance for like 90 bucks. That was a great deal. Um, we got these Zondervan encyclopedias and background commentaries, a bunch of background information. I just picked up... Uh, the New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology and Exegesis on sale from Zondervan. So I'm very happy to have that. It's edited by Moises Silva. Uh, very good. bunch of other reference works, Bible dictionaries, um, other types of dictionaries. Then we start with the commentaries. And the commentaries go all the way down and then continue up to that top shelf there. Um, and you'll notice I have my Game of Thrones Funko Pop. So we have Jon Snow, we have Tormid, uh, the Ice King, Ned Stark, and Arya Stark. So some of my favorite characters from the show. And then starting up here, we have Old Testament introduction leading down into my woefully inadequate Old Testament section of my library. It really ends at this shelf right here. So I have just a little over one shelf of Old Testament stuff. And then we get into the New Testament section, which is um, noticeably larger. And we start with stuff on um, the Gospels, New Testament, background, stuff like that. And then we go down into individual Gospels, parables. Finally down in the Pauline literature. Um, I got a lot of stuff on Paul. Not nearly as much as Paul Pauline scholars, but there's really there's too much stuff being written on Paul. Like we've heard it all. I think there needs to be a moratorium for like a good twenty, thirty years. Then let people write again. Um, historical Jesus starts there with Myers and Marginal Jew series. We come down here, we got uh, Barnett's little series, Dunn's um, Christianity in the Making, some other historical Jesus stuff, Keener, um, a great edited volume by Bach and Webb on key events. Then we go into, uh, you know, just more historical Jesus, some of that's apologetic, then stuff on the, um, on the birth of Christ, virgin birth, birth of the Messiah by Raymond Brown down there. Then coming up, we have uh, the death of the Messiah, then, you know, things on crucifixion, resurrection, and then we get into textual criticism, manuscripts, um, translation, canon issues, then just books on the Bible, um, on scripture, on the doctrine of inerrancy, inspiration, that type of thing. And then we get into... Um, Hermeneutics and Exegesis, I have quite a few volumes covering that stuff. And then we get into um, Biblical Theology, the Old Testament in the New, and stuff like that. There you got Childs and Barr, they were sparring partners. Um, more Biblical Theology. That'll lead us into Old Testament theology, then New Testament theology, 
and then I have my bolt mount section before we get into um, individual authors theology so you have Joe and I theology um, the theology of Paul the Apostle Paul Apostle of God's glory in Christ um, first and second edition so on and so forth then we get down into systematics slash dogmatics so we have Bart's um, 14 volumes right there a couple of other books on Bart a um, couple of Moltmann volumes honestly those need to be those need to be thrown in the trash um, then we get up to here and here's the reform stuff so you have Calvin um, Turretin Voss uh, that last volume there that's a biography and Voss's letters um, it's actually quite good and we have uh, Muller Mueller I don't know how you say the name his post-reformation reform dogmatics I picked that up on sale from uh, Westminster bookstore um, Bovink Bovink's excellent this is a biography on Bovink then we have um, what are these called these are foundations of evangelical theology I think yeah so foundations of evangelical theology I believe I have all of them um, I've not read all of them I've read I've read portions of some of them but I, I think that's every volume in the series then to the far right that's a little book that um, Lex and Press just sent along by Ben Witherington then we have Odin's Systematic Theology, um, Geisler. I actually pulled that out of the closet when I was reshelving stuff. Honestly, it could go back in there. I, I read that years ago, early on in my salvation. It's it's not that good. Um, down here to John Frame's Theology of Lordship. Then we have Concise Reform Dogmatics. Then there's Christian Dogmatics by Broughton and, and Jensen. And then Jensen's two-volume Systematic Theology. Um, there's Kelly's two volumes. I think he's got more coming. Frames Big Systematic Theology. Uh, Robert Letham's new volume. Then we have the uh, Joel Beakey and Mark Jones Puritan Theology. Culver's Systematic Theology, um, which which isn't terrible from what I've read, but the print is kind of small in that one. Uh, down here into just single volumes, you got Bird, Bray, Horton. Um, Boyce and then into just various you know individual volumes covering different issues of systematic theology up to here to questions on atonement um, divine suffering you know the impassibility of God then we get down to my old Princeton stuff so there's Warfield uh, Machen Right Reason in the Princeton Mind, then down into Van Til. Van Til leads us into Frame. And then from there we have um, a very small section on philosophy that, that definitely needs to be bulked up. Uh, Aquinas has his own shelf now. I just made a bunch of Aquinas book purchases from a sale that the University of Notre Dame Press was doing so haven't cracked into any of those yet I'm actually um, I got a lot of time on my hands now with this whole coronavirus thing so hopefully I'll be able to get into there um, a woefully woefully under um, underbuilt section on the sacraments that is getting beefed up. I just ordered a couple of books from uh, Father Alexander Schmemann, along with some popular patristics volumes. Um, here's a couple books on Kuiper. This whole bottom shelf here, that's all Peter Lightheart. Um, one of my favorite authors. He, he just really stretches your brain and makes you think. And then here is... Um, this is... The smaller desk, I call it my utility table because it houses the uh, the printer. Uh, my laptop used to be over here. Now I have a Mac Mini. And I just put Windows on here. Uh, which I'll show you. Let that pop up real quick. I put Windows 10 on here yesterday 
for the specific purpose of loading BibleWorks 9. Um, the reason being, I use Accordance most of the time. I have Logos as well. Uh, Accordance is my main Bible software. But BibleWorks comes with a lot of primary texts that I would have to pay for in either Accordance or Logos. And I figured I had this Mac Mini sitting here. It wasn't really doing anything. So, I, you know, I might as well make use of it. Um, so if I could just show you, you know, just if we look at the list, like this is Philo. And we have Josephus in Greek. We have Philo in Greek. We have Old Testament pseudepigrapha in Greek. Um, you know, just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of Syriac stuff in there. Uh, there's a Peshitta. There is actually several Peshittas and translations. So, you know, just a, a lot of works I don't have available to me in either Accordance or um, Logos. There's all types of Targumim. So, good stuff. Um, and then as I back out, this desk sits atop two small bookcases. So you see uh, the bookcase to the left that houses monographs. There's some, um, I think that's New Testament texts and tools or tools and studies or something like that. There's some uh, Library of Old Testament studies, Library of New Testament studies. Um, down there, I, f I forget, I forget the series that those yellow ones are, but they're Peter Lang. Then there's some De Gruyter volumes. Um, De Gruyter, I don't know how to say it. I don't speak German. Uh, down here, books on preaching. Then there's grammars, um, Hebrew and Greek. There is my readers, uh, six-volume hardcover cloth overboard readers, Bible from um, Crossway. Just a power strip with all, all the stuff in there. I got it there so it's easy access. Um, going up, there is another shelf here. Bunch of Wundt volumes from Moore Seebeck. And there's a bunch of, um, I think those are JNST SUP volumes. And then we get over here into church history. Um, Pelican, there's a Lateret. Uh, Gonzalez, a couple random volumes, Stark there. Um, book on the first seven ecumenical councils. Uh, let me just back up a second. I want to bring it all the way back because I keep forgetting to talk about these Funko Pops. But up here, you have the notorious B.I.G., hands down one of my favorite rappers. He's in the conversation for greatest of all time, even though he, he died early and didn't put out a ton of material. Um, here's The Incredibles from The Incredible 2. This one, she is on an angle and she has to be leaned up against the thing, otherwise she will fall. I don't know why they designed it like that, it's pretty stupid. Then you got Axel Foley from Beverly Hills Cop, played by Eddie Murphy. Um, here's John Wick and his dog, that one. I let slip through my fingers on Amazon, then ended up getting it from eBay and paying a couple bucks more. Uh, then up top here, you have Thanos, Proximal Midnight, and Ebony Maw. Those are from uh, Infinity War and Endgame, respectively. And then up here, you have Thor burying um, Stormbreaker into Thanos' chest at the end of Infinity War. And up here, uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. So anyway, back to the church history. We got, um, you know, just some various volumes, early Christian doctrines, uh, the development of Christian doctrine, heresies by Brown. And then we come into um, Hall's Church Father series, reading scripture, learning theology, worshiping and living wisely with the church fathers then we go into some stuff on um 
the Anti-Nicene Fathers, so Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, and we get into uh, Christological controversy, uh, there's some from Clement of Alexandria in there, Athanasius, Marius, Victorinus' commentary on Galatians, um, some stuff, uh, Basil of Caesarea, or Basil, I think, I hear it said Basil so much, I would say Basil, like the herb, but I think it's rubbing off on me. Um, Augustine, St. Cyril of Alexandria, various things there. Um, down here into books on deification or theosis, Eastern Orthodoxy, um, a volume from Boyer on the Church of God. Boyer was a Roman Catholic. A uh, bunch of books on Luther. And then from Luther to Calvin. And from Calvin to some other just Reformation type stuff, Arminianism, um, theology of the Reformations, some newer stuff, reforming and always reforming, um, Reformation worship, then a couple of books on Mary, and then we start the Trinity section, um, I got a bunch of books on, you know, what was going on in the 4th century, Surrounding Nicaea, excellent works, all of them. Um, Williams, Arius, Heresy, and Tradition, very good. RPC Hansen, that's that's a must read in the field. John Beer's three volumes, very good. Louis Aries, Nicaea and its Legacy. Um, I'm I'm ashamed to say that I haven't finished uh, Colette Anatolios's Retrieving Nicaea yet, and I've had it for years. Um, what I have read, it's it's been good. His his scholarship is top notch bunch of other books studer trinity and incarnation you know just just classic stuff here's some various volumes on um some of the fathers especially the cappadocians and the trinity and uh michael burgos his two first and second edition of against one is pentecostalism uh he has a new volume coming out shortly there's uh grumpy dwarf because uh, he's right near Guatkin's studies in Arianism, and Arianism makes me grumpy. A uh, bunch of other books on the Trinity. Trinity, for a very long time, has been my main area of focus. And it's funny, I've been watching these videos lately on YouTube of uh, different pastors' libraries, and one of them, he had... Man, so much theology and so little on the Trinity, it was killing me. But, you know, everybody has their own interests and specialties, so. Still more Trinity, this is all Trinity, there's Superman. Trinity ends there, Christology begins here. Um, I study early Christology as much as the Trinity, if not more these days. There's Batman. Uh, there goes Aquaman. See a lot of stuff on the Trinity and Christology. Here is the step ladder I use to get to the higher shelves. Um, yeah, more Christology. Then Christology ends there. Right next to those two volumes by Torrance on the left. There's some stuff on... Um, emperor worship, you know, um, the divinity of the Roman emperor, pagan monotheism, things of that nature, um, deity in the ancient Near East, and then we get into the very small section on pneumatology, a few books on the Holy Spirit there, um, and just because I didn't have anywhere else to put it, there's the Iliad and book on classical mythology, those are all the classic Greek myths. That we've come to know and love. Um, then you get to the main desk. And over to the left. I have a bunch of volumes by um, Comfort. I almost said Ray Comfort. But that's the evangelist. The way of the master guy. Um, from Philip Comfort. These two on the left. My buddy Michael Burgos. He just gave them to me. They are the text of the earliest Greek New Testament manuscripts. Um, these are papyri. 
they have photos that are not overly helpful um, I could actually take it out and show you a picture Well, this one has the unseals. I think volume one has the papyri. Yeah, so. You know, these aren't. These aren't especially helpful. Um, the transcriptions, how are, however, are very helpful. So, yeah, I can't really see the point of putting such low quality photos um, in these volumes as a matter of fact if you wanted to go into Bible works now you know Bible works is out of business now so they're no longer making this but if you did want to go into it um, just find something real quick Here we go. Now you could get these very high quality, high resolution um, images of these manuscripts that are about a billion times better than anything that's in that book there. Um, but I digress. So a couple other volumes, these little volumes by Comfort are basically... Um, just this big one here, New Testament text and translation commentary. It's like you split them all up and just put them in um, nice little volumes that are the size of Metzger's uh, textual commentary on the Greek New Testament or, um, you know, like the UBS or Nestle Allen volumes. A um, couple more Bibles. These are Reader's Bibles, Whole Bible, the Gospels, Paul's letters, their Psalms, a couple of prayer books from the Orthodox Church, um, Gospel of John and a Nelson's Ministry Manual. Um, there's Baby Groot. And then coming down here, some more Funko Pops. We have Iron Man, Captain America. We have Bruce Banner turning into the Hulk, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, uh, Black Panther, and this row right here with Iceman, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, and the Human Torch. These are all the Marvel 80 first appearance ones. Um, same with Deadpool there. And Wolverine up front. It's Captain Marvel to the left and Dark Phoenix to the right. Um, coming under the desk, we have all of my primary biblical texts. So Hebrew Bibles, Greek Bibles, Latin Bibles of all sorts. Um... That is a Christian Standard Bible. The little wooden thing it's sitting on is a book stand that I pull up when I have to keep a page open to type something out. There's my BDAG or BDAG um, Trenches Vocabulary Guide to the Greek New Testament. Here's some Reader's Bibles, uh, my synopsis, and these are all for the most part diglots um, then you got the wide margin and the Byzantine um, text and then I think that's the Q volume um, dual monitor setup 27 inch iMac with an extra monitor the magic keyboard magic trackpad up here is my little CS Lewis shrine with um Deadpool there that's not the uh first appearance Deadpool and just like I showed everyone in the first video got a little light back here that kind of illumines that pretty cool to look at you know again Lewis not my favorite author not my least favorite so if we open the closet up um various Bibles study Bibles Parallel Bibles, different translations, a couple of shows of that, some stuff on uh, against Calvinism, um, apologetics, 
some random bits and pieces. There's Edgar Allan Poe, the Brothers Grimm, some Hemingway. Down here, some cult stuff. Uh, some Catholic volumes. You know, stuff uh, stuff I generally don't access too often gets thrown in the closet. Um, on this side, there's some lexicons, a few random volumes, um, some stuff on historical atoms, some things on writing. These are like the uh, pastoral type topics, um, women in ministry, stuff on kingdom, marriage, abuse in the church, um, things of that nature. Down here is some charismatic stuff and some eschatology. Uh, very bottom shelf, you can't see because it it's covered with these boxes. These boxes are just full of books that were pretty much useless to me. I'm really going to have to go through them and see if I could give them away or just toss them out. So that bottom shelf, there's a bunch of binders with printed material in it. Um, the second to last shelf, it's empty. I think it's got some Bible boxes on there. If you go up in the closet, just a bunch of empty Bible boxes and Apple product boxes and then sneakers. Nothing too fancy there. And now here's for one of the newest things that you didn't see the last time I made a video. Um, I got this new bookshelf behind the door. And initially, um, this and this were not there. So I actually cut those and put them there so the shelves wouldn't bow because they're pretty cheap. So on top, I got these Barnes & Noble's classics being held up by those uh, two book stands. This top shelf, a couple of readers' Bibles, um, script, ESV scripture journal, that one all the way to the right, that's the inductive journaling New Testament. Um, here's my Ratzinger slash uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict Sixteen section. And then that goes into um, Scott Hahn. And then from Scott Hahn to Brant Petrie. And then there's my Catechism of the Catholic Church. These bottom ones, um, these are just little little cubes filled with nonsense right now. They could be removed and books added as necessary. And then we have the island, I guess you would call it. I call it my standing desk. It's um, two Ikea bookcases put together um, and I have a runner over the middle to cover the seam this is actually a back scratcher but it reminds me of the pointer that they use for Torah scrolls here is a Canterbury leather bound this is leather over board um, King James version of the Bible by Schuyler and you can see how beautiful the text is so Generally, I'll get up in the morning, I'll come over here, I'll read a couple of chapters while I stand here. Um, there's a couple of Hebrew Bibles, there's altars, um, translation and commentary. There is a statue, I guess you would call it, that woman I used to go to church with, she gave me for my birthday one year. Um, here's a communion set, that's actually the one we used uh, when I got married and the ceremony and then as we come down um, here's some Septuagint stuff and then this shelf over here these are some primary texts Apostolic Fathers um, some of these Oxford volumes in the Apostolic Fathers series and early Christian writings and um, I forget I forget what this What's this series right here? This is um, Oxford Early Christian Gospel Text. So that's the Gospel of Mary by... Who's that by? Uh, Chris, Christopher Tuckett. Um, come down here. Old Testament Pseudepigrapha. A um, couple of volumes. Second Baruch, Fourth Baruch. More Old Testament Pseudepigrapha. New Testament Apocrypha. A bunch of apocryphal Gospels. Um, this introducing the Apocrypha and the new Oxford Annotated Apocrypha. 
different kinds of apocrypha. These are the kinds that are found in Catholic and Orthodox Bibles, so they really they need to be moved somewhere else. Um, then we got some some Qumran stuff. Then um, some other various extra biblical literature. And then if we come around. Here's some popular patristics volumes, um, a couple of primary texts, Eunomius, Gregory of Nyssa, against Eunomius. Um, these ancient Christian doctrine volumes, I still need to get volumes three and four. There's three volumes of the Acts of the Council of Chalcedon. Um, these are religious early church father series. I don't think they make those anymore. A um, couple of books on creeds, confessions, Reformation Study Bible, Concordia, Hebrew New Testament, and a Quran. And that's about it. These are my premium Bibles. This is this is blue steel. Beautiful, beautiful uh, blue goatskin leather. Um, this one, I don't know if I named this one. I don't think I did. I have to see. This one is a British tan goatskin NIV. Uh, I did not name this one. This one's beautiful though. This is the um, this is the Skyler Quintel. I think it's called. They call it the Brick. And then this one is Stormbreaker. I got this after Blue Steel. Um, I got Blue Steel because it was single column. No references. I wanted something to read. But then to teach and preach from it, uh, I would get lost in the text. So something with double column and some cross references was um, desirable. So, yeah, that's about it. I mean, you know, a couple of drawers in the desk there. Nothing, nothing to see there. But, yeah. That's the updated office tour. Give you one last panoramic. I don't know if I mentioned this, but shout out to uh, Tim Bear Toilet. That's how I say his last name. Buddy of mine from Twitter uh, for posting a picture of his office and these little, you know, the, you know, these little rolling stands. He said they were cheap at Staples. So I actually went out today and got one, and uh, he's right. It was cheap. You know, nice little thing. Right now, my MacBook's sitting on there, but um. You know, as I pull books off the shelf, when I get done with them, rather than stack them up on the desk, I'll throw them on there and then, you know, just roll them back to the rightful place. All right, so that's about it. Hope everybody's staying safe. Um, I hope if you do have a home library that, you know, during this quarantine period, you're able to sit down and read a little bit and just pray that God blesses you all and that. All, all of this coronavirus nonsense gets over with sooner than later. All right, God bless.